Hey everyone, this is One Dragon, and today I'm showcasing the build I used for Don't Fear the Reaper or the secret ending in Cyberpunk 2077 at level 20. I'll also be doing a walkthrough discussing the strategies for each section of the run in another video. There'll obviously be spoilers ahead, so please keep that in mind. The Reaper ending is unlocked during the Oilfield side mission, Chippin' In, and you have to guilt Johnny into coming up with a solo suicide run on Arasaka Tower. Okay, but as second chances go, this is your last. I refuse to be that naive. I'll try damned hard. I'm personally not entirely sure as to how the enemies scale, but it is certainly very difficult at levels below level 50. I personally think that this is one of the best builds out there because I was able to beat the secret ending at 23 and then after improving the build slightly at level 20 in a timely manner as well. I released a video with the precursor to this build so if you haven't seen that be sure to check that out. I'll also be improving it and trying some new strategies in future. Keep in mind that obviously patches and just game balance changes may change the build in future, but hopefully I'll be able to update it and change it depending on any bug fixes or patches. The first thing I'm going to go over is the main concepts that I use before designing this build. Number one, at low levels, most if not all attacks from these higher level enemies will one shot you. There has been one occasion where a smart weapon didn't one shot me, however the majority of them do one shot you and it's best to plan as if they're going to. This means that one of if not the best way to deal with enemies is to use tech weapons or hacks as they pierce through walls providing that they are detected and have that red outline. Second point, the beefiest or tankiest enemies that you have to deal with are the mechs and robots. So I opt to increase my damage to robots to ensure that they die in a timely manner. Obviously, without these, it's still doable, but it can take a significantly longer amount of time to deal with the mechs and the robots. Number three, you will likely have to deal with a few enemies rushing at you with melee weapons so I personally use double jump and occasionally dodging to avoid attacks. Fourth point is the legendary short circuit passive is overpowered. I already went more in depth in my precursor boss build video, so I definitely recommend you check that out for a comparison between weapons without short circuit and with short circuit. All right, on to the attributes and perks. As mentioned before, this is building off a previous video, so I won't discuss all the details from that. Definitely go check it out if you haven't. I've already covered the beginning attributes, crafting stuff, some utility perks, so again, go check that out. Generally, I aim for 18 technical for crafting legendaries, 9 or 10 intelligence for free legendary quick hacks, followed by 7 in reflexes or 8 for additional damage, if you are over level 20, you can opt to increase any of these attributes for more additional damage or utility. The primary guns I use at low level for the Reaper ending is the Widowmaker, and it's a tech weapon, so I use quite a lot of perks that improve tech weapons, so I'm going to go over the engineering area first. Despite having 18 attributes in tech, I only managed to hit 12 engineering in the skill progression, Mainly because if I were to go out of my way to level it further, it would likely push my level beyond level 20. If you don't care about completing the Reaper run at a low level, I recommend leveling the skill progression as high as possible, as the rewards at level 15, 19, and 20 are huge, huge, huge significant damage increases. On to the perks. I put 3 perks into Lightning Bolt, which increases crit chance by 10% for tech weapons, 2 points into Lickety Split for the reduced weapon recharge time, which effectively means a faster fire rate for tech weapons. I put 3 points into Tesla for the increased charge multiplier by 55%, 1 point into Uber Charge for the extra 50% damage, and this is really important for low leveling, 
Blade Runner for an increased damage against mechs, drones, and robots. I love the Blade Runner reference, and also I'll be discussing more about this a little bit later, but as I said before, mechs and robots are the tankiest things that you have to deal with in Don't Fear the Reaper, so any source of damage increase to those are important. I also put one point into Play the Angels, which deals an additional 50% damage on ricochets, but this is mostly a spare perk, so I just put it there for the ricochet bullets that land from the problem solver. I personally haven't used Gun Whisperer because I enjoy flicking the tech weapons at the right moment, and I'll probably end up using it myself in subsequent runs. In the Assault page, within Reflexes, I have 3 points in Eagle Eye, reducing the aim down sights by 50%. 3 points in Bullet Jock for the 10% increase to Rifles and SMGs. 1 point in Bullseye, increasing the damage again except while aiming. 1 point in Executioner, which deals 25% more damage to enemies whose health are above 50%. And finally, Covering Kill Shot, which increases crit when firing behind cover which you do a fair amount of on low level runs. I'm not sure if you have to be like peeking behind cover and your character sort of peeks above it, or if you can just be like hiding behind the wall and shooting it. On max level runs, it definitely isn't necessary to get this perk because you have more than enough crit chance from other sources, but on low level runs, anything helps. Once again, there are heaps of damage increasing skills in this tree, so it's absolutely worth spending more points here if you are of a higher level. I also spent a few extra points in quick hacking since the previous build video, completing Biosynergy for RAM and one point in Forget Me Not again for RAM. I personally don't hack too much aside from using ping and the occasional short circuit because it ends up being really slow to do so. But again, I'm just adding these perks because I had some leftover ones. One more thing with the perks. I got four additional perks from the free perk shards that you find just playing through the story and within the game. Two within an NCPD mission and two within story quest give me danger. I think there are maybe 10 free perk shards throughout the world, but I only really go for the four and I have two left over anyway. For cyberware, I have a legendary cheat sheet video, which I recommend that you check out in case you want to build your own builds. For cyberware in this build, it is really important to be able to deal with enemies quickly before they one-shot you. Especially since I spec'd into intelligence, I always opt for a limbic system enhancement. Since this one is the rare variant, it adds 15% crit chance. And I also put an uncommon visual cortex support for an extra 16% crit damage. If you have higher intelligence, I highly recommend that you buy the higher tiers for even more crit chance and crit damage. Now, one of the most important pieces of cyberware is the legendary mechatronic core. This adds an additional 50% damage against drones, mechs, and robots, which is extremely useful in dealing with the mechs in the Reaper ending. I originally tried without having the mechatronic core and Blade Runner perk, and without those two important increases in damage against mechs and robots, it maybe takes like three to four minutes to deal with an individual mech otherwise. For the ocular system, I paid back Victor and bought the Kuroshi Optics MK3. I slotted in the mod's trajectory analysis for the bonus 50% headshot damage, threat detector to sometimes help spotting enemies, and provide that red outline that allows me to shoot through walls and weak spot detection for the extra 5% crit chance. The next piece of cyberware that I equip is the Synaptic Accelerator. I'm not sure if this is completely necessary, but it triggers when you first start the Reaper ending so you don't immediately get one shot. For the operating system, I used the Raven Cyberdeck from Robert in Kabuki. However, as I was low leveling, I didn't have enough street cred for other cyberdecks. If you are a higher level and have more street cred, then I recommend the Netwatch Netdriver MK5 or even the Stevenson Tech MK4 for the faster upload time. For quick hacks, the main ones I utilized were Ping and Short Circuit. Ping I used for outlining the enemies, 
connected on that specific network, and it's fairly important for using tech weapons and piercing through walls. The other most important hack is short circuit, not necessarily for its active, but more so for its passive, dealing additional electrical damage every time you land a crit on an enemy. This increased my damage significantly by give or take one third, especially since I used multi-pellet or multi-projectile and fast fire rate weapons. I used double jump legs as a means of avoiding some of the melee attacks. However, you can also just double tap to dodge some of these, but double jump works really well too. Clothing Mon, I suggest grabbing one Fortuna mod for the 15% crit chance and one Bully mod for the 30% crit damage. Keep in mind that there would definitely be other good mods, however a lot of them don't function at the moment. Once again, as a reminder, the first Fortuna mod I got was in the heist from the Arasaka guard in the elevator, and you can get a Bully mod either from loot in the open world or from Sasquatch or a guaranteed one in a chest by the Netwatch agent in the cinema. On to the weapons. The primary weapon for my Don't Fear the Reaper build is the Widowmaker. It is an extremely powerful tech precision rifle, avoid confusing it with regular precision rifles. And the reason why it's super strong is number one, its ability to shoot through walls which allow you to not take any damage or not get hit. Two, tech weapons have the extra charge modifier on them. Three, it's a multi-projectile weapon, so it triggers short circuit constantly. The iconic description reads, Nash's rifle, looks like he won't be needing it anymore, fires two projectiles per shot, and deals chemical damage with an increased chance to apply poison. Charge shots deal more damage. As it applies poison, there's a chance that enemies will get sick and throw up. This has the advantage of stopping enemies from either attacking you or rushing you. However, the disadvantage of it is their head will move around as they're throwing up, so it occasionally caused me to miss some shots. For modifications, I generally stack crunch mods on the weapons themselves for the additional damage which I believe applies per projectile. You'll notice that this gun shows as having no base crit or crit damage, so make sure to have a good amount of crit chance from other sources other than the weapon itself. At short range, you can fire it like a shotgun, but normally for that I just use the problem solver when enemies get too close. To get the Widowmaker, make sure to go raid Nash and the Raffin with Pan Am after getting her vehicle back. Alright, so where is this hideout? A hop and skip away. Be sure to find Nash after the carnage and pick up the weapon. Typically, I upgrade this to legendary after the point of no return or whenever you decide to complete the ending. You can not upgrade it after crafting it to legendary. However, this can become seriously costly as upgrade cost increases after each upgrade. I'll now briefly touch over the problem solver. The problem solver has insanely high DPS and is very useful for dealing with enemies at a close range and also shredding smasher. As it has an exceptionally fast fire rate, Providing you have high crit chance, it regularly applies the short circuit passive. Again, I mud it with crunch mods for the additional damage per shot, and there's more information about the problem solver in my previous video. Johnny Silverhand sends his regards. If you'd like to check out my full playthrough, there's videos for it linked in the description. And also, I'll provide a link to my previous build video in case you missed that as well. Hopefully this helps you to defeat Don't Fear the Reaper at a low level. I'll be aiming for even lower levels after this, so feel free to tune in on the stream. Thanks.